Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back to our channel. If you are here for the first time, my name is Alexis. And I'm Louis. And we are a couple that lives together in Switzerland and gives you all kinds of tips about travel and living here. So if that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing and sticking around. So in this video, we're going to give you all of the tips that we've come up with over the last <laughs> two years when we lived in Zurich of how to do Zurich on a budget. Zurich is always listed as one of the most expensive cities in the world and we definitely felt that living there and I know that you guys feel that when you're traveling there. So hopefully these tips will give you everything you need to do to both one, experience and see the city and enjoy it, but two, try to leave without your wallet hurting too much. So stay tuned, we have a bunch of tips for you that are gonna give you kind of everything from hotels to transportation to food, everything in between of how you can do this city on a budget. Okay, so our first tip is likely the most practical one and it's where you'll spend a lot of money if you're not careful and that's on transportation. So Switzerland trains and things like that can be really expensive, but you have something unique in Zurich and that's a true 24 hour ticket. So I haven't really seen this. Geneva doesn't have this. Most places have just a day ticket. In Zurich, you can really make it work for you across two days. So if you get it at noon, you can use it until you know noon the following day. This ticket is about 13 francs. If you don't have a half fare card, it's 680 or something like that if you do have the half fare card, but you can use that unlimited across all of the transportation within the zones in Zurich. So Louis will go and give you some specific tips, but if you just look at the map, anything within that really is considered, you know, within mm -hmm. this ticket. There's a little funicular, that's all of the trains, the trams, even the boats. So you have a ton of options to get around in Zurich. Yeah, so my second recommendation that is built within this recommendation is to take advantage of it for the river cruise. There's a river cruise that goes from the Landes Museum, which is close to the main train station and goes all the way to the lake. And this is really such a nice thing to do, especially in the summer it runs every i think 20 or 30 minutes and it's really uh, a nice experience to see zurich and the old town from the river and this is built into your public transportation ticket really a nice uh, thing to do so that is open from around april to october so depending mm -hmm. on when you're here to take advantage of it but you have access to the river cruises and the larger ones on the lake as long as you're within the zone. Mm -hmm. So just check the maps and see where your ticket is valid. And it's just about the zones, you are not just blocked into the one zone, the 110 zone. You can of course take a transportation ticket that will take you in in other zones. It's just going to, to cost more money, but this is something also that is feasible. For example, when I recommend people to go to the nice mountain of Zurich, Utliberg, it requires two or three more zones. It's not too much more expensive. I think it's like maybe eight francs more for a day ticket to, uh, to do this. But, and this is going to be our third advice, take the funicular from Zurich train station actually to Utliberg and the view there is also quite amazing. We really love going there in the summer or in the winter. You have a view on the whole Lake Zurich, on the Alps also and on Zurich. So it's a cool way to have kind of a mountain experience without having to go spend the big bucks in big mountains and still have a, a cool mountain train experience to Utliberg. There's a lot you can do with these train tickets. We have yeah. one more tip for you. There is actually a little tiny funicular right in the heart of Zurich and we <laughs> love to take that. Yes, yeah, so this is the Polyban. So this is a funicular, an actual funicular that is going from Central, so which is close to the main station. And it runs, I think, every five minutes. The view from the Polyterrasse, which is just to the right when you arrive, is quite stunning also on Zurich. So this is something that is built into your public transportation ticket and will take you to some very cool places. Yeah, so to summarize, definitely take advantage of yes. this public transportation that Zurich has to offer, but the way to do it saving money is to get those timed tickets and you can really make the most of 24 mm -hmm. hours or 48 hours yeah. or however long. If you buy individual tickets for everything we just mentioned, that's when things start to get really expensive. So pack a day or two and do all of these things. Zurich is really sure. small, it's super feasible. 
So the next tip is actually something you can do totally for free. You can do it by foot and that is exploring the beautiful city of Zurich by foot. So Zurich is surprisingly charming and I say surprisingly because I think everybody <laughs> knows it is Switzerland's biggest city. It's a banking hub and mm -hmm. I think you expect it to look very financial and corporate in a way and I was mm -hmm. shocked by how oh, colorful and charming the streets are. So Zurich is situated around a river. It's called the Limat and then it opens up into a lake, the basin of Zurich. You can walk up and down the river on both sides. There's two kind of different old towns on each side of the river and they are so, so charming. So you have the old town on one side and you cross into the other side and you have Niederdorf. There's beautiful squares. We love Munsterplatz. You have Augustiner Gesse, which has these really, really colorful houses. Mm -hmm. It's a great place to take pictures. I'll overlay some footage, but don't neglect to spend an hour or two strolling around Zurich's old town. Least, yeah. It's really, really walkable. It's compact but there's so much to see. It has really charming mm -hmm. Swiss architecture that you might only expect to see more in the central mountainous regions, but you can get it in Zurich yeah. too. So definitely, definitely take advantage of checking it out. It's free. All free. So the next recommendation we have is actually for lodging. This is almost always going to be your biggest ticket item anytime you're on vacation and it's Switzerland in particular can be really, really expensive. So the trade-off a lot of times you need to make in Switzerland is is for the location and the price. Mm -hmm. So in a couple other videos about budget, we recommend looking outside of the city center if you want to stay for a little bit less expensive, a little bit more affordably. That tip still applies, but we did find a location really in the heart of Zurich and we think is a really good option if yeah. you're looking for you know that combination of affordability and location and that is the Green Marmot Capsule Hotel. It is really in a perfect location in Zurich. Yeah. It's right by the Stadelhofen train station which is right between the kind of Grossmünster, that really big church that you see in Zurich, along with Bellevue. That's the square that has the opera house that the river opens up into the lake. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really in a perfect location in Zurich that's walkable to everything. This is a really cute capsule hotel Hotel. That's basically just everything that mm -hmm. you would need. They have a couple different options. There's handicap options. There's options if you're a single traveler, if you're a couple. Mm -hmm. They have a female only section, which I know is important if you're a solo female traveler, even though Switzerland is really, really safe. It is an extra level of just being more comfortable. So this is really a basic kind of hotel that has everything you need inexpensively in the heart of Zurich. That's really, really mm -hmm. hard to find. So take a look at it. We will link it in the description and I'll have the link here. A couple other features that we really liked, they had a really nice terrace that you can like walk out, have sure, a cup yeah. of coffee in the yeah. morning and you have a beautiful view on the Limat, which is just amazing. For because, less than a hundred francs, it's yeah. kind of, you, you can't find it in, uh, in Zurich otherwise. I think. We get so a lot cool. of messages. Yeah asking about hotels that are 50 francs, 50 euros, 100 francs, 100 euros, things like that, because yeah. people are familiar with mm -hmm. backpacking around other countries in Europe where that's something that's a little bit more accessible. That's really hard to find <laughs> in Switzerland, but we found it with the Green Marmot Capsule Hotel. So definitely check it out. Tell them we sent you. The link is in the description and let us know what you think. So another activity that I always recommend in the summer that I really love. I go actually, I used to go uh, in the summer all the time to the Limat to go for a swim. So there is a specific place close to the Dinamo Bar and the Marriott Hotel. You have a bridge from which you can jump in or you can also just take stairs and jump into the river and then let yourself float and you can come back, you can float for, I think, three, 400 meters. So quite a nice uh, time to refresh. If you like it, you can just walk back and, uh, and do that again. I would recommend having a bag that is waterproof if you have it, but otherwise you can also just know that you're going to go jump in the water and come just with like your t-shirt and a swimsuit and just you can do this and then I think people are, are used to seeing in Zurich people in, uh, <laughs> in swimsuits in the <laughs> summer and like coming back from this place. I absolutely love it. It's free and it's just yeah, a nice way to, uh, to refresh when it's uh, hot in the summer month. Okay, so listen up to this tip because this is another big ticket item yes. in Switzerland where you can accidentally spend a lot of money without really meaning to mm -hmm. and that is on food so I've recommended in any video or if anyone ever reaches out and asks me how to do Switzerland a little bit more expensively and that is to not eat in restaurants within reason as much as possible so I understand wanting to have that really special dinner definitely do that but 
for breakfast and lunch and even some dinners, it isn't necessary. I think mm -hmm. you can have picnics all over Switzerland with beautiful views and that is always our recommendation. So a couple tips here. I would recommend going into Migro or Cup. I think Cup is a little bit better for this. These are the mm -hmm. biggest supermarket chains in Switzerland and they have really great grab and go to go types of options for lunch mm -hmm. and things like that. If you are from the US, this is something that you might not think about. You can drink outside in almost all of Europe. <laughs> you can definitely drink outside in Switzerland. So you can get a bottle of wine, get some sandwiches and salads, things like that bring a blanket and just enjoy a really nice picnic on the lake in Zurich. I think it's a beautiful way to spend an afternoon. You're mm -hmm. out enjoying the sun or the weather, whatever it is, and you can just enjoy that experience. There's something else that's really fun and they have these around Zurich on some of the, the little parks and things like that and some other places and they have grills where yeah. you can bring your own kind of wood or coal or whatever and grill outside. You'll see them all over and people tend to mm -hmm. do that. So if you're in Zurich in the summer and you're in either the Migro or the Cup, either of these stores, you'll see that they have things to kind of aid mm -hmm. for that because I know people are yeah. trying to grill outside. That's something that's really fun and kind of unique. So they're up and down the lake in certain places. So you can look for those grills or you can just have a picnic, but I think both of them are nice experiences that you can do much, much less expensively than oh, yeah. eating out in a restaurant because even for us when we lived in Zurich, we did not do much restaurant eating. It's <laughs> really, really quite expensive. And I think Swiss people tend mm -hmm. to treat that as more of a special occasion than just part of the culture, something you do a lot. Mm -hmm. So I would say take that advice if you're planning a vacation. Also, try not to eat in restaurants and trust me, you'll thank us yeah. later. You'll save quite <laughs> a bit of money. So one other tip, and this is going to serve both as Zurich on a budget and also kind of secret Zurich. This is the archaeological windows of the city. So this is something the city has put together and you can get for free some keys that open some cool places of the city that you would not have access to otherwise. So you have to go to the Stadthaus, which is close to the Fraumünster church and Barschnitzli Island. Then you, when you get in, you ask for the archaeological window. You'll have to give, I think, something, uh, a card for collateral and then they'll give you one or multiple keys you have three or four colors and a map and then you'll be sent off by yourself and you can keep them I think for more than two days even so this was really fun you had different places where for example we opened with the key an electrical door and could get into some archaeological uh, sites of, uh, of the old city of Zurich we could get through a passage that is not used anymore or have other things, uh, for example, the, the city walls. So this was a great way to have a kind of secret Zurich experience and this was totally free. Quite uh, quite cool, uh, I think, and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. Well, if you yeah. Did, uh, yeah, depending on how much time you're in Zurich, it's definitely something that we recommend yeah. doing. You could spend a half day or full day doing this. One, it's just a cool way to discover places of the city you may not have gotten around to, but some of these are like secret underground museums. Yeah. It's not just like you stumble on a place and you need to figure it out yourself. There's signage and there's all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really cool. We'll have overlaid some footage while we're talking. So you'll see a little bit of what we're talking about, but it is totally free. And that's not something mm -hmm. I can say in Switzerland often. So definitely put it on your list. I think it's a really cool, unique experience. And if you don't like it, you didn't pay for it. Yeah. Okay, so continuing not even budget recommendations, totally free recommendations. This is to rent a bike for free in Zurich, which you can do. <laughs> yes. So there is something called Zurich Rolt. This Zurich is, Rolls. <laughs> yeah, Zurich Rolls. And this is a program that the Tourism Board of Zurich operates, which we think is really, really cool. So there are three locations. One is all year long. I'll put them on the screen here and then two are from May to October, so spring only locations. And basically all you do is you walk up to the counter, you give them a deposit of 20 francs, which you will get back when you give them the bike back. And then you have the bike for a limited amount of time, but it's free and you can go yeah. up and down the lake. You can bike around Zurich and it's really, really nice. We would definitely recommend biking up and down the lake if you're here in the summer on a nice day. It is absolutely beautiful. So definitely check out the Zuri Rolt locations. Totally, totally free. You just need to have some cash for a deposit. Mm -hmm. But I think this is another amazing perk because yeah, Zurich is really. an expensive city. Anytime there's something free and nice to do, we're going to recommend it to you guys. <laughs> 
So our last advice for this video is the Kunsthaus. So the Kunsthaus actually is a great art museum that has been recently redone. It's beautiful architect architecturally <laughs> speaking, but it's also quite expensive usually. But on Wednesdays, the Kunsthaus is actually free. So this is a great way to take advantage of seeing quite a nice museum and having it for free in Zurich. If you are quite interested in museums in Zurich and you know that you're going to go to multiple museums, the Kunsthaus, the Landesmuseum, for example, is also cool. Other museums in Zurich and you want to do it on a budget, you have actually the Zurich card and we haven't talked about it because it kind of pushes you in order to break even to do quite a few activities that you might not be interested in. But if you are interested in to these activities, these museums, the Zurich card is quite cool. You can take it for 48 hours or 72 hours. So this is the same principle. It starts and if you start at noon, it's going to be uh, noon two days later. And this is quite nice because it also takes into consideration the public transportation. So it's a cool option, Zurichard, to explore Zurich. A little bit more expensive, but it's still something to consider if you are going to do quite a lot in Zurich. Okay guys, so those were our best tips to do Zurich on a budget. We really hope that they are helpful. If there's any other particular locations in Switzerland you'd like us to give you some budget tips on, we can. Yeah. But if you want some general Swiss budget tips, we do have this video here. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you guys as always for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and maybe send it to a friend that you think mm -hmm. would enjoy it too. If you want to catch up with us in between uploads, you can follow us on The Traveling Swiss on Instagram. Always love seeing you guys there. But that is it for us. We will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.